everyone. My name is Dave, one of the instructors from ERS International. Today we're going to continue in our study of uh, rope rescue systems, and in particular today we're going to talk about mainline operations, beginning with uh, taking a look at the Petzl ID, which is our lowering device for most of our operations. We'll talk today about the uh, setup of this, the terminology associated with it, the operation, and we'll finish by incorporating the ID into a raising system to complete our mainline operations. The other half of mainline is the belay setup. In a previous module, uh, you could look back at that and review the operation of the Petzl ASAP. Also in previous modules, we talk about the construction of pulley systems, and you can also refer to that uh, as it relates to the raising portion uh, that we'll cover a little bit later on. So for starters, let's take a look at the Petzl ID. We've been using the ID for a number of years now, and it is our friction device, or, or our lowering device, if you will. It has a lot of advantages over the brake bar rack that we've been using for a number of years previous to that. The Petzl ID is, with the, the red cover, the red ID, which is what the, all the plants have, uh, is rated uh, NFPA for general purpose loads or two-person loads. Um, it is uh, an auto stop and anti-panic device which are two great features that this has over the brake bar rack, again, that we used in years past. By auto stop, what we mean is that the device uh, requires you to actively do something to allow the load to move. If you let go of the handle, the load automatically stops. It doesn't fall to the ground. The anti-panic feature or nomenclature refers to the fact that the handle, as, as you're operating the handle, when you operate the handle to a certain point, the load begins to move but if you continue to operate the handle further in that direction, the load then again will stop. So it guards against the operator of the ID inadvertently trying to lower someone too fast uh, or uh, panicking and allowing the load to fall to the ground. So two really important safety features um, in the Petzl ID. As a bit of uh, uh, orientation and, and to cover some terminology on this, the, the red cover represents the front of the ID and uh, the front cover uh, opens or hinges, if you will, on this rivet pin right here, allowing you access uh, to the inside, uh, to the internal cam, which is where the rope's gonna go. And we'll talk about loading the device here in, in just a couple minutes. The, with the cover closed, and again, you can kind of see the handle, the operating handle, all the way down in what would be the clockwise position where the handle's pointing down towards six o'clock would be the store and the lock position. And then as the handle rotates counterclockwise and it comes up towards the top, this becomes kind of the beginning of the operating position. One thing to notice is that in the lock position, if we go back to this and open the cover, you'll see that the, there's, a, there's a very little gap right in this area here where the rope is going to be placed. And you see that that gap then, it would be pinching or clamping, if you will, the rope. And that's where the brake function comes from in that or the lock off function. Then as we bring the handle around more towards that 12 o'clock position where we had it a moment ago, you'll notice that that gap opens up and that would allow or begin to allow rope movement uh, through the device, which is controlled by the friction in your hand. We'll talk about that in a second. Even at this point, the, the rope will not move because of the spring tension on this cam device right here. We have to bring the, the handle further counterclockwise and, and what, at this point we'll meet some resistance in the movement of the handle and at that point, we'll force the handle just slightly more to try to find that little sweet spot, which is going to allow the, move, the rope to move around this cam device in here. Okay. The panic position is all the way co uh, counterclockwise. And when I yank it down to this position, the load is going to stop again. And this is going to lock off and not allow rope to move through there. Okay. Now, that doesn't demonstrate fully without the rope in here because it needs the tension on the rope to spring this cam but you'll see it in operation as we look a little closer at that. So the red is represents the front, uh, on the front, um, and, you'll, and you'll see a, by the little inset graphic here that there is a, a, a diagram on the front cover that shows you how to load the rope into the device, so it gives you a little direction there. Similarly, on the inside, as you see in the other picture, there are two graphics, one down here to indicate uh, the end of the rope and another up here at the top that shows your hand gripping the rope and that also guides you to uh, on how to rig the rope through the device correctly. It is important that you rig the rope correctly through this because the ASA, excuse me the ID is a directional device. If you rig it backwards 
the, there is a possibility that the load can slip or fall. So it's critically important that the device be rigged correctly. That's why we, we point out that there are two graphics that you can refer to, one on the front cover and then the two individual graphics, if you will, making up one on the inside. So you want to make sure that you're using those and also pay attention to the direction that we'll provide here in just a moment on how to properly rig the rope uh, through the device. This is the attachment hole down here at the bottom. This is where the carabiner is going to be placed that will attach to our anchor. And then this small piece right in here, this little toothed cam right here at the bottom is the anti-rigging cam. This is a, a safety device included in, in the ID to help prevent you from having a problem, uh, a failure if you will, if you do inadvertently rig the rope backwards. It's important to understand also that this is not a fail safe. This will, may catch the uh, inadvertent rigging of the device backwards, but it's not a guarantee. So we don't, we, we don't want to rely on this to guard against rigging it backwards. We want to follow the graphic, we want to follow the instructions that we're going to provide. Depending on how old your ID is, there's one other component that you may look at, and there is a gray button on the end of the operating handle. Older IDs don't have this gray button, the newer ones will have that. It, regardless, it's not a thing of concern for us. We won't use this button in our operations. This primarily gets used in scenarios where we have very light loads, um, that, such as we might see in some situations where uh, a load is being brought down a slope rather than a straight vertical or high angle setting, and where uh, the friction in the, in the ID is too much for that. And this helps defeat a little bit of that friction but again, doesn't really have any application for us in our, in our real high angle environment. So that's a little bit of orientation to the thing. There are some inspection points that we want to be aware of uh, before we get going. So prior to using your ID, uh, realize that there are some internal components that we don't have the ability to inspect simply by opening the cover and looking it over. So one of the things that we can kind of, uh, one of the ways we can kind of assess that a little bit is simply to give the ID a little bit of a shake or perform a bit of a rattle test. What I'm really just listening for are there are internal parts that might be, have broken off and might be flopping around in there. Then I'm simply going to look at the overall condition of the ID. Uh, is, the, is the plate, the, particularly the red plate uh, on the outside, is it in good condition? Does it appear to be bent or does it have nicks or gouges in it that might damage our rope? Check the condition and the integrity of that hinge pin that I pointed out earlier to make sure that it is in place. There's also a, a small a mushroom cap, a little post right here. I want to make sure that that post comes on the outside of the plate and it helps to keep the plate from, from springing open. It, it, it serves as a stopper for that. When I open up the cover, I want to look inside at the parts and I want to make sure with the handle in the unlock position that the, this spring cam uh, does have spring tension on it and that it will snap back and the same thing holds true for the anti-rigging cam. Does it snap and does it move freely? I can look at the overall cleanliness of the device to make sure there's not a, a bunch of dirt and gunk uh, inside and I can and clean that out a little bit with a, uh, a, a little bit of a cloth or, or uh, even some cases maybe a, a q-tip to get in there and get some of that uh, dirt out of there. And then the, the thing that's a, a little bit tricky to look for and, and I'll show you where it is, but you'll, you'll want to again refer to the, the, uh, the picture of the inset and the video here on how to inspect it for wear. In, in, a sen in essence, we have this groove or this uh, 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 trough, if you will, that the rope runs through. To my left, uh, there's a small raised portion of metal there, and that is the wear indicator. Basically what you're looking for is, is the trough or has that little groove, has it widened itself out? In other words, if it looks something like this now, has it widened out to this point, to the point where that has widened out to that little wear indicator? If the device shows wear to the point where the trough is out to that wear indicator, that is your indication that it's time to retire the device. It's, it's been worn sufficiently that it should be retired. The issue that you'll have at that point is a tendency for the rope to want to slip through the ID even in the lock position. Okay? So this is a piece of stainless steel so it is going to wear pretty slowly. It's not something that's going to get worn out in a short period of time uh, as a general rule but it is something you want to be aware of. Okay? So that completes our little tour of the Petzl ID. Um, we'll uh, move over to uh, our anchor point and we'll take a look at how to rig the rope up 
and then how to operate the device and, and take a little bit closer look at some of the internal uh, features and how the device works. All right, we're gonna take a look at how to rig the Petzl ID. So as a point of reference, uh, this uh, block of steel here is gonna represent our load today. And then it is attached to the red rope, which is our main line. Runs up through the high directional pulley, uh, in this case attached to the, the structural steel in the overhead. And then the red rope runs back towards our anchor point where we're gonna be running our lowering operation. This lower will be run through here, uh, through our ID as we've talked about and we want to talk about how to correctly rig the ID to make sure we don't have it backwards. So we have a point of reference here. We have our main line, again, the red rope, and it's attached to our load right down at the other end, which you saw. To start the operation, I would suggest that you develop a routine or a, or a habitual way that you rig this thing so that it's always done the same way. You're much, much less likely to miss something or to make an error if you're always doing something the same way. So for starters, I'm going to hold the ID in my left hand upright. In other words, the writing, the printing on the front is, is upright. And I hold it in my left hand and I'm going to open or bring the operating handle up to the 12 o'clock position. At that point, I can open the cover and that'll give me access to the inside of it so that I can install the rope. Now I'll hold it here just slightly sideways so that you can see it. But here's the way that I'm, I've always done this and it seems to be working out pretty well. I have the ID in my left hand, I have the rope in my right hand, almost as if I'm shaking hands with the person on the end of the rope. I simply take my palm and I put it palm down to my other hand, which is palm up, and place the rope through the device in this fashion. Notice that if you do it exactly this way, the rope that's attached to the load is also in line with the handle. The handle is pointing at the load. The rope is pointing at the load. My handshake was pointing at the load. If you try to do it the other way, if I hold this here and I shake hands this way and I thread the rope through backwards, this is the backwards way to do it. Notice that the, even though the load is, the rope is still pointing at the, uh, at the, uh, the load, the rope is still pointing at the load is above the handle. It doesn't run parallel, if you will, along the path of the handle. That's not the rope that attaches to the load. The rope that attaches to the load runs parallel alongside the handle. The other clue for you to watch for, when I do it correctly, again, I'll do, start over, covers open, handle pointing at the load, I'm pointing at the load, I lay those two together. Notice that the, the tensioned portion of the rope, the part of the rope that will have weight on it, the first thing it sees is this tooth. That's the first part of the, the device that it runs past. Even though it doesn't contact the tooth, that's the first part it sees. And then the slack portion of the rope comes out of the top. If you remember back to that graphic, there was a picture of your hand right here, and there was a picture showing the end of the rope right here. That end of the rope is attached to our load. So that helps you keep this oriented a little bit. Again, we're referring to the drawings. When I close the cover and I look at the drawing or the, the engraving on the front cover, again, I'll see the end of the rope down here coming out, attached to my load, and I'll see my hand, a graphic of my hand, up here holding the rope like this. So I should be able to double check my work, cover open or cover closed, I have a, a point of reference. So combined with the fact that I have a routine or a normal way that I always put this together, the chances of us rigging this thing backwards should be pretty low. Of course, our, our final safeguard in that is always gonna to be to have someone double check it. So if I build the system, someone else will come over and verify that I built it correctly. And that would include the things like, did I build the anchor correctly? Are the carabiners locked and oriented and so forth? So that's how we get the thing rigged up.